When it comes to soccer or football, depending on which side of the pond you're on, AFC Richmond may struggle to find a victory, but Ted Lasso won big when it came to the Emmys, with it being one of the biggest shows around and the prime feather under Apple TV's cap. That's why we decided to take a look at things you might have missed in the show, such as Easter eggs, real life inspirations, and behind the scenes facts from the show. So let's take a look. Diamond Dogs on three, ready? One, two, three. Diamond Dogs! Diamond Dogs it is! Ted Lasso, both the show and the character, make offhanded references to a number of real-life people, both famous and not so famous. Ted's practice speech that he gives to Jamie Tart is a reference to the speech given by Allen Iverson during a press conference, what, 20 or so years ago? Not a game. We talking about practice. So here we are, Jamie. We're talking about practice. While Higgins makes a reference to Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney's real-life purchase of non-league team AFC Wrexham, which by the way will be a focus of an Apple TV series in its own right, and subsequently led the actors to send a cease and desist letter to Ted Lasso, which they also used to compliment McElhaney's show Mythic Quest. Ted also calls out broadcaster Diane Sawyer for a date, to which she replied on Twitter, I'm in, your move. And the show also makes a reference to singer Reba McIntyre, as Ted leaves tickets to Roy Kent under his name. I believe you're holding a ticket for Reba McIntyre. Which also prompted her to tweet about the show. But as we said, there are also other real people referenced in the show, with a picture of Jason Sudeikis' real-life uncle, George Went, on the wall of the kebab shop alongside Kent and Marcus Mumford, more on him later, while Ted's childhood crush, Miss Scanlon, was Sudeikis' real-life art teacher in elementary school, and Ted's neighbor, Miss Shipley, Sorry, Miss Shipley! was also one of Sudeikis' real-life teachers. Of course, Soccer Saturday hosts Jeff Stelling and Chris Camara, who went viral, by the way, for that hilarious I Don't Know Jeff video, which I highly recommend watching if you haven't yet, so they make a cameo, while former players Gary Lineker and the one and only King Thierry Henry, who Coach Beard blasphemously tells to shut up, all make an appearance. Also, unless I missed something, the only current real-life manager slash player mentioned in Ted Lasso is Man City boss Pep Guardiola, although he is yet to make an actual physical appearance. Also, if you didn't notice, the other pundit on Soccer Saturday, George Kartrick, is the head coach Rebecca Fires in episode one. Ted Lasso also makes references to a number of movies, one of them being Fletch. After sleeping with Ted, Rebecca's best friend Sassy says that she's going to order a huge breakfast and charge it to his tab, to which he replies, I'll be your underhills anytime, which is both a reference to the wingman line in Top Gun and the movie Fletch starring Chevy Chase, who charges an extravagant lunch to a rude country club member named Underhill. Ted Lasso also makes references to The Shining and Jack Torrance with the line, then why even have one? Coach Beard can take that thing out for you, Jack Torrance style when referring to a door. The movie Wings is also referenced in the Christmas episode and was specifically requested by Sudeikis, with the tracking shot used as they all sit down for their Christmas lunch, a nod to the movie. Also, the hometowns in Higgins' speech are the real hometowns of the actors that he is referencing. Just like Sudeikis makes reference to the teachers of his past, he also makes reference to his hometown, Kansas City. The Joe Arthur Gatestack t-shirt Ted wears in the pilot, and again in episode 7, is a reference to four different barbecue places in Kansas. Joe's Kansas City, Arthur Bryant's, Gates, and Jackstack. The logo on the shirt is modified from the three Casey Clothing Co., whose owner, Brandon Curran, is a high school friend of Jason Sudeikis. In the episode Make Rebecca Great Again, Coach Beard can be seen writing the opposition's lineup on a whiteboard, which may be familiar to anyone who has seen the movie Victory, or Escape to Victory, depending on where you're from. The 1981 movie, which starred Sylvester Stallone, Michael Caine, and Pele, follows a group of allied prisoners of war who agree to play a football match against the Nazi team, only to use it as a method to escape captivity. A number of character names from the movie, such as Stallone's Hutch and a bunch of others, can be seen on that whiteboard. The show also makes a reference to Major League in the finale, when Ted says after AFC Richmond are relegated that they will win the whole effing thing, emulating the line said by Tom Berenger. There have been a number of rom-com references throughout the show's run. So many I will probably miss a few here and we'll have to quickly fire through them, but here we go. In Carol of the Bells, there are a few references to Love Actually, such as Phoebe's search for a dentist being like the scene where the Prime Minister goes in search of Natalie, and the moment she confronts her bully with handwritten cards, a parody of the end of the movie where Andrew Lincoln tells Kira Knightley he's in love with her. 
The leg lamp in Keeley's apartment is a reference to the lamp in A Christmas Story, while the You Have Me a Coach line in the episode Rainbow is a reference, of course, to Jerry Maguire. The Richmond couple who supposedly inspired Titanic is similar to the interviews of couples seen in When Harry Met Sally, while the speech Ted gives Roy to inspire Isaac is inspired by When Harry Met Sally, Notting Hill, Jerry Maguire, and The Princess Bride. I think we got most of them. He's here, he's there, he's every blank and where. Roy Kent. Roy Kent. Roy Kent might be one of the best characters on the show. So good, in fact, that he sparked a bizarre internet rumor that suggests that he is a CGI character, but like Brendan Hunt, who plays Coach Beard, Roy Kent actor Brett Goldstein does a lot of work behind the scenes as one of the show's writers. However, Goldstein was only ever supposed to be a writer on the show, but after working on the character of Kent, he realized that, hey, I can nail this role. So he emailed the show's producer, Bill Lawrence, with an audition tape saying, if this is embarrassing, you can pretend you never got this email. But Lawrence seemingly loved it, and he was cast to play the part. You probably already know this, but the character of Ted Lasso actually got started as a commercial to promote NBC's airing of the Premier League and seemed destined to remain just that. However, after some encouragement from Olivia Wilde and Brendan Hunt, Sudeikis began outlining what the show might actually look like and eventually pitched the idea to Scrubs creator Bill Lawrence, making the show a reality. Speaking of Scrubs, Lawrence coerced his former lead star, Zach Braff, to direct an episode of Ted Lasso while he was visiting in London. And he did it. Zach Braff directed the episode Biscuits. Now, AFC Richmond and its players are all fictional, but there are some real-life inspirations to them all. AFC Richmond, with its London setting, blue and red colors, and years of being in the lower end of the Premier League, mostly resemble Crystal Palace, with their real-life stadium, Selhurst Park, playing the part of AFC Richmond's Nelson Road. But let's face it, Richmond could really do with a player like Wilfred Zaha on their team. Meanwhile, Ted Lasso's story beats were inspired by Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp, who is known for his strong rapport with his players, although he has a much more extensive knowledge of the sport than Ted. Roy Kent is definitely based on Manchester United hard man and world's grumpiest man Roy Keane, with a splash of Vinnie Jones thrown in there for good measure, while Jamie Tart is arguably a mix of Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo, David Beckham, and in my opinion, Jamie Vardy and Jack Grealish. Danny Rojas is a version of injury-prone striker Chicharito Hernandez and the happy-go-lucky and lovable personality of Sam, similar to Chelsea's forever lovable N'Golo Conte. Although I hope the similarities end there. Otherwise, that would mean that Conte is in a relationship with Chelsea's owner Roman Abramovich, which is an unsettling thought. The show makes a number of references to musical theater, with nods to the likes of West Side Story and Oklahoma. And this might be down to the fact that Hannah Waddingham has an extensive West End career, having appeared in several musical productions, including Spamalot and The Wizard of Oz. Waddingham has shown her singing abilities in the show a few times already, although she actually scaled back her performance of Christmas Baby Please Come Home, as she wanted Rebecca, who is not a professional singer, to remain true to herself. While the show is known for its quick and witty dialogue, not everything happens on purpose, such as Ted hitting his head on the door after Rebecca gives him a pep talk. As Sudeikis jumps, he strikes his head on the door and remains in character as he walks out of the shot, but the moment left him busting his head open and having to get it glued shut. He had DiCaprio and the glass from Django Unchained eat your heart out. Before he was known as the Wonder Kid Nathan Shelley, Nick Muhammad actually auditioned for the role of Higgins. However, he wasn't the only one, with Jamie Tart himself, Phil Dunster, also going for the role before they all ended up getting their respective parts. Also, fun fact, Nick Muhammad does a great cover of the Jurassic Park theme song. The dance Ted does in the first episode that leads him to getting Rebecca's attention should be familiar for all of you SNL fans out there. The dance is the very same one Sudeikis performs in the skit, What Up With That, where Keenan Thompson portrayed a host that continually interrupts his guests. It's becoming more and more prevalent that actors do their very own stunts in movies and TV shows, and that was no different in Ted Lasso, with one of the prerequisites of the show being able to show off their footy skills, with them sending in tapes of them playing as well as acting. In fact, Phil Dunster actually pulled off that amazing 45-yard kick against the Spurs for real, while Cristo Fernandez, who plays Danny Rojas, has professional experience from his time playing in Mexico. 
One of the best moments from the Carol and the Bells episode was the moment Bill Skinner, who asked to Ted for an ussy instead of a selfie in the first episode, made his return. What makes this moment even better is the actress who plays his mother and the dentist, Dr. Rogers, is actually Bill's real-life mother, Claire Skinner, and is known for starring in shows such as Outnumbered and Doctor Who. Now, we told you that we'd get back to him, but Marcus Mumford of Mumford & Sons is actually the man behind the show's title theme. He's also the music composer alongside Ted Hove. Marcus met Sudeikis on the music video for Hopeless Wanderer, and Sudeikis personally called Marcus and asked if he could write the music for the show, which Marcus accepted, especially since his hometown team, AFC Wimbledon, is right next to the show's fictional team, AFC Richmond. And finally, Ted's famous biscuits. The actual biscuits are disgusting, with Hannah Waddingham saying that they're just dried sponge and it required all of her acting skills to pretend that they were good. However, a recipe for shortbread posted online for Ted's biscuits is actually meant to be pretty good. 